Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Danny, the Wicked Awesome Gardener, coming at you from the Wicked Awesome Garden. And today, it is August 1st. It is beautiful out here right now, mid-70s, it's sunny, perfect weather to be out in the garden. And I'm gonna take you for the early August garden tour. It is high summer, which means this garden is in full-on production mode, which is fantastic but it also means we have to start thinking about fall. So some things have started to change over. Let's take you through and see what we've got. First things first, look at this beautiful bean trellis. And look at all the beans. This is crazy. At first I thought we were getting all Kentucky Wonder pole beans, but I've noticed some of them seem to be getting longer. Those must be the asparagus beans, the yard long beans. And some of them are starting to change color. So those must be the Cherokee Trail of Tears beans. But I am going to have no want of green beans for dinner. We continue on through massive spaghetti squash. Oh my goodness. We've got two of them hanging right there and as you can see those are my crochet melon hammocks and you can find that on my channel, a video on how to make those. These melon supports that keep my spaghetti squash up. And you might ask why some of these are not in supports. Well, I left my crochet bag at a friend's house and I'm going to pick it up this afternoon. And I'll be definitely making some big supports for these spaghetti squash. But this angel hair squash might be my favorite new thing. The spaghetti squash itself is great, don't get me wrong, but I'm the only one in the house that eats it and a whole spaghetti squash is pretty big just for me. These angel hair spaghetti squash though are personal size. That is just enough for one dinner with a little bit of a side dish or some cheese and uh, maybe some tomatoes and basil in it, make like a sort of caprese spaghetti squash, be fantastic. I'm wondering though, some of them grow yellow and some of them grow green and it feels like this one is ready to harvest because I can't dig my nail into the skin, but it doesn't seem to show any signs of turning yellow. I'm gonna leave it for a while. That one is huge and I need to get a ladder so that I can get up there and put it in a hammock. But the foliage on these vines is starting to die off. So I've been cutting some of it as I go, but the vine itself still seems to be producing strong, putting off lots of flowers. It's come all the way up. It's come all the way up over the trellis down to the other side to meet the upcoming cucumbers. <laughs> One of my cucumber vines died and I can't find any reason for it. I don't see any squash vine borer activity or anything. It's just the leaves started to wither and die and I can't find any pest damage. And on the other side, my cantaloupe did the same. So I'm guessing no cantaloupe for me this year, just tons and tons of spaghetti squash. This is a Kajari melon vine that is surviving, but not thriving. I'm really not expecting anything from it. It just got way too shaded out by the spaghetti squash, so I will put those in a different place next year. None of my other cantaloupes or squash made it through the uh, spaghetti squash assault, except for this, which I think is that honey nut, and it's growing up and up and up but I don't see any signs of production on it yet, so we'll just have to see. Speaking of my Kajari melon, I did transplant two of them over here onto this cucumber trellis, and they have started to grow. One of them is very puny. I don't expect much from it, but this one, if things go really, really, really well, maybe I'll get one Kajari melon this year, but I'm not all that hopeful. The cucumbers have finally taken off. They're starting to grow up the trellis. So all along here, we have tons of cucumbers 
and I've harvested a couple small pickling cucumbers. Here's a market more. Oh, hey, check it out. I should harvest this now. Ah. Got it just in time before it got too big and super ripe. So there we go, we have my first Space Master Cucumber of the Year. Hey, hey, what do I see here? My first chocolate cherry tomato. All right, we're gonna try it. Mmm. Yep, that was yummy. The tomato that shall not be named has started to turn color, yay. I'm gonna assume it's gonna be red. But I've never grown it, so I don't know. The zinnias have been eaten back time and time again by rogue bunnies, but this one just seems really, really determined. I'm hoping it survives and will flower, but it also looks like it's infested with aphids. Ugh. Over here I planted what I thought were my ground cherries, but I have apparently mixed them up because they don't appear to be growing in any sort of a husk and the first one is ripening. So I don't know what kind of tomatoes these are. They might be the 42 day tomatoes, but I thought I only had one seedling from those, so I don't think it's that. I'm gonna apologize right now for any background noise because neighbors are out doing stuff in their yards today too. So there may be like a chainsaw or something or a plane going over. I'm gonna try to mitigate it if I can. Here is tomato forest bed part two. I have been staking them as I go, but some of them are quite overgrown. And then over there, those are a bunch of determinant plants like Romas and San Marzano. So I'm not really sure how much I can do for those, but I will try to control them as best I can. These are all starting to produce. We're getting lots of tomatoes set on, it's fantastic. On these vines, the original tomato forest bed, which still isn't 100% pruned and all of that, but it's cleaned up quite a bit. There aren't a lot of tomatoes set on them, and that's because we had so many days of 95 to 100 degree heat, it caused a lot of the blossoms to drop. So we don't have a whole lot. I am anticipating my first Cherokee purples. They are starting to set more flowers and produce more fruit. Definitely looking forward to trying the Valencia. Here's the rose tomato. The Juliet is ripening tons of tomatoes right now. I've been coming out and snacking on them the last few days here and there. And I did top some of those suckers that were branching off and I'll get around to fixing it and, you know, making it one main plant once all of these ripen up. One thing I'm really excited to see is these tomatoes here starting to turn color. This is insane. This is 12 tomatoes on one flowering branch on one truss of tomatoes. And I'd love to see those all ripen up. They're not going to all ripen at the same time, but it would look pretty stunning if they did. And I am super excited. So you saw, if you saw my preview on Instagram or Facebook yesterday about this. I really wish that I could get a better camera angle on this because this mortgage lifter tomato is massive. This might be one of the biggest tomatoes I've ever grown. And I'd love, I don't have a scale, but I think I'm gonna borrow one from a friend just so I can get a weight on it. Hasn't shown any signs of ripening yet. It hasn't turned color in the slightest. I'm just hoping that it's soon because that's gonna make one hell of a special BLT. Tomatoes are a pain in the butt to film. The leaves keep turning off my camera. And these are really small so far. They're just little baby tomatoes, but look at the black beauties. They are already turning color. They all seem so small. I do hope they grow. We're getting tons of cherry tomatoes in there, the 42 day tomatoes, and others just seem to be producing right along. As you can see, I still need to do a lot of pruning in there, but we're getting there. 
I'm so happy about these eggplants. They're growing, they're so pretty. I love their foliage, these beautiful purple flowers. Now, I thought I planted two Black Beauty and two Rosa Bianca, but from what I see here, and then here, I have two Rosa Bianca in the back and a Black Beauty and a Rosa Bianca here. That's okay, I will eat them all. We have our mystery patio baby here and it seems to be producing just like the patio baby that I had before, only it's maybe not as prolific. So it's good to know, but it's still gonna give me fruit. Tons of little, tons of little tiny eggplant. Maybe it'll get more productive as we go. There was a lot of blossom drop happening with the extreme heat. So I kind of can't blame it for only starting to set fruit now. All the eggplants are kind of doing the same. The peppers are looking great. I've harvested a few peppers off of these California Wonder. Um, some in the middle here, still growing. I'm gonna let them grow a little bit more. Um, maybe I'll let some sit for red peppers, I don't know, but I think they're just fine as green but they're starting to get new buds now that I've plucked off the fruit. The chiltepin peppers are finally starting to flower. Teeny tiny little buds, so I'm gonna imagine their peppers are very small. These loot shower peppers are growing very, very tall, putting on tons of flowers. They are covered in peppers. Fantastic, means I'm gonna have plenty to make paprika with this fall just waiting for them to turn red. And the Alma peppers, a little slower. They were a little smaller and more behind, but we have some Alma paprika peppers here and they are setting more fruit. Like this one has a whole bunch of little babies. So I'm psyched to mix the two and see what kind of paprika blends I can make. There's the Purple Beauty Pepper back there, and we'll go around and take a look at those in a minute. Three out of my four jalapenos stayed small, but they've each got three or four jalapenos on them. But then this one's an overachiever and grew twice as tall, and it's definitely setting a lot of peppers, and there's a lot more to come on it. This one here makes me giggle because it looks like a bunny took a nip of the end and decided, I don't wanna eat that. Moving around to check out my peppers from the other side, I saw the coolest thing that I hadn't noticed. Ah, it's my first Purple Beauty pepper. I saw it start a few days ago, but look at it. It just got so huge so fast. Oh, it's awesome. Well, hopefully the other one starts to produce as well. Wait a minute, where's my other purple? Beauty. <gasps> oh no. Guys, this isn't a purple beauty. I thought I planted two purple beauties. Is that another, that must be another loot shower. Guys, oh, I'm heartbroken. I only planted one purple beauty and that's it. Just that one plant. It means I'll get more paprika, I guess, but I am just gonna have to let that grow and grow and grow and save the seeds because I definitely need more of those in my garden next year. The zucchini and summer squash are growing great. I've gotten a lot of squash off of those and there's nothing on them right now that's harvestable, just a, a bunch of little babies, but they've been very prolific. I am definitely not gonna have a shortage of zucchini. Here's one thing I'm really excited to see. My Brussels sprouts are brussling. So the bunnies did a job on the lower leaves of these, but for once I was not frustrated because I've gotta snap those leaves off anyway for the Brussels sprouts to really start forming. This particular stalk is looking great. Like I said before, this is the season of transition where we're going from the summer garden to the fall garden. So a lot of bare patches out here right now. This would be one of them. This is where the broccoli was and the bush beans were. And so now we have a big patch of bare ground. 
I did pop in some more beans. And as you can see, if you look really closely, we are seeing our first beans pop out of the ground. I need to get that fence up tomorrow because otherwise the bunnies are gonna come in here the next couple nights and realize that I've set out a buffet. More bear patches here, well, sort of. I've pulled up all the lettuce, the kale, basically everything that was in this half of the bed. And I dumped in some old seed starts that had just not made it into the garden. So there's a lot here that I need to remove, but there's only so much room in my compost tumbler. So it's going in little by little. In the meantime, all that stuff is acting as a really ineffective ground cover, um, at least covering some of the space and helping to keep it from weeds, which as you see, had already kind of overtaken this corner anyway. But pretty soon I'll be digging it all up and starting some lettuce for the fall. This last patch of bare ground, I don't know if anything will actually happen here. This is where the potatoes were. And I did throw some potatoes that had kind of started to go to seed in my pantry in here, but a lot of them really didn't have that many in the amount of eyes. So I wonder if they're actually going to grow, if I'll actually see anything grow here. If nothing pops up by September, then I'll go ahead and sow a whole bunch of fast turnaround fall crops like bok choys and radishes and things like that in here. As you can see, the radishes have put on tons and tons and tons of seed pods. I'm going to be picking basically all the young tender ones this week for snacking and the rest I will leave on the plant just to dry so that I will have cherry bell seeds to plant this fall and this coming spring. The onions are doing all right. Some of them are starting to be bent over though by the weight of all these radish pods. You know an onion is ready for harvest when the neck breaks. So when the leaves flop over like this, that's it. They're not gonna get any bigger. They've grown as big as they are because now the leaves have broken. And so I pulled this one because I saw it had totally flopped over. The others are all standing pretty upright, so I'll leave them in a bit longer, see if they get any bigger. I mean, I didn't succeed in growing the biggest onions, but that's okay because I don't eat a ton. I just kind of want a small onion to go in um, to go in my salads or in my soups because uh, it's just me I'm cooking for most of the time. And here's my pretty okra. I'm hoping for some blossoms soon because, I mean, this looks promising in here. There's just tons and tons of buds, just waiting for something to flower. But I can't wait to try okra for the first time. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, 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 look. Of course, the sun has to go behind a cloud so you can't see the full beauty of this beautiful yellow blossom. But look at that, my first okra flower. Oh, I can't wait to try that. Won't be long. And that's the garden. That's where we stand today. So much going on. Purple peppers, tons of eggplant, tomatoes everywhere, spaghetti squash. Ah, so crazy. My first okra flower. There's gonna be a taste test for that, don't you worry. So we should have a mega harvest video coming very soon. Lots of fall planting, so don't worry about that. Just because summer is coming to the end does not mean that even up here in the Northeast that we don't have a lot more planting to do, a lot more garden work to come. I'm here for it, I hope you are. Go ahead, click that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, Leave me some comments. I love talking to you guys. Check out my Wicked Awesome Gardening shirt. If anybody wants one, I can hook you up. I haven't started the store yet, but I am getting ready. That's all in preparation. This is my old logo though. I'm gonna change them up just a little bit. Uh, the gardening part goes underneath instead so we can see the lettering better. But yeah, all sorts of things coming, all sorts of really cool stuff happening. And I will see you next time here in the Wicked Awesome Garden while we grow wicked awesome food from yard to table. Bye-bye.